Hi, um, it's possible using CoCalc to very easily host your own open web UI server uh, where you only you have access to people via an authentication token so that people who know the URL can access your server or maybe just you and other people can't. And you can do this with a GPU. So let me walk you through how you do that. So first I'm logged into CoCalc and I'm gonna click on your projects to see a list of all of my projects. You'll have at least one. Um, I have a project called Demo where I'm illustrating things. And in this project, I'm going to make a compute server. So I click on the servers button on the left. That gives me the compute servers and other servers tab. Now you click create compute server. And so I'm gonna call this the open web UI demo. Open Web UI, by the way, is a fantastic open source free um, web application that lets you chat with any model that's available through Olama. And it also has interesting support for retrieval augmented generation, for parsing images, and all kinds of other things. It's really, really cool. Okay, so uh, we'll create a virtual machine or a compute server on Google Cloud. And we want things to be fast, so we'll use a GPU. And we also want them to be really robust. Um, you can use a spot instance, but it might not be available. It might start up and then get killed. And it's really it's useful if you, um, how, if you know exactly what you want to do. You have a bunch of inference, and maybe you want to run it on a bunch of machines. Spot instances could be ideal. Or if you're extremely tight budget, you can try to create a spot instance and then you know, try different locations in the world until you get one. But for the purposes of this demo, let's just choose a standard instance. It's gonna be about a dollar per hour to run your code on a GPU. Okay, so let's also select the Olama um, image. This is very important. If you leave it as, say, PyTorch, you're going to get uh, something that's suitable for running code written in PyTorch, which is just interesting, but a different thing. Okay, uh, let's make the disk 100 gigabytes, and I'll, I'll choose a slower disk. Typically, you end up you know, downloading a big model and storing it, and it's kind of annoying if you have to spend a lot of money storing it, um, and most of the time, the model just gets loaded up into memory, and then you chat with it for a long time. So a relatively slow but inexpensive disk is ideal. Um, let's set up DNS so that we get a nice uh, domain name for our server. So I'll call this Open Web UI Demo. And what will happen in a minute, once we start this all running, is we'll be able to click on this link and get um, attached to Open Web UI. Okay, so that's everything. Let's start our server running. Okay, so it's now allocating an L4 GPU and a corresponding machine in the US Central 1B zone. Um, what will happen is first the machine gets created and then it will start booting up and we'll see a little progress bar at the bottom down here as it boots up. And during that time, we can also watch the boot up process by clicking on the serial uh, button right here. But we still have to wait a little bit for the machine with the GPU to get allocated. And only once we've done that does the boot process start. Um, while we're at it, let me just quickly show you for a few seconds around CoCalc. There's, uh, you can create lots of different files and edit them inside of CoCalc itself, like a Jupyter Notebook or a LaTeX document. You can use a command line Linux terminal um, that's directly available inside of CoCalc. Let's see if our machine started running. I see the price went up, so that's a good sign, uh, but it's still getting uh, built or allocated. So we just have to wait a bit for our GPU to become available. There it is, great. Okay, so now notice this little slider. What this is indicating is things are booting up and a little bit of software is getting installed. What will happen is once it boots up, it then installs the latest version of Open Web UI using Docker Compose. And that involves downloading two relatively small Docker images, starting them running properly, and it takes about a minute as well. So. In any case, let's watch the boot up process by clicking on this serial button. So here we can see that things are booting up, um, various code is running, um, something called Ubuntu 
drug abuse, just a bunch of stuff. It's the, the Ubuntu boot process that's getting carried out. So you can watch that if you want. Um, finishes pretty quick usually. SSH just got started. And now it's installing some software. What this does is it installs um, Node.js and Docker. And then once it's installed Docker, it sets up a Docker container, which will then launch OpenWebUI using Docker Compose. So you have to wait a minute for that to happen. Okay, it's nearly there. Um, starting it up, the file system's mounted. By the way, if we click on the terminal, we can select the compute server and run the terminal on the compute server. And that will give us a command line terminal on this remote server that's starting up. And by the way, if you type docker ps-a, we'll be able to see what containers are running on there. So right now, there's just, um, just these two, but within a few seconds, docker compose is going to start running. In fact, if we look at var log, uh, supervisor, you can say tail dash F um, open web UI log, and then we can watch it's now downloading the Docker images for open web UI and extracting them. Another way to get at the same uh, log files is to go supervisor CTL, and that gives you a little interactive. Um, a browser of what's running on supervisor D, and then you could say tail dash F open web UI. And then that shows you uh, all the output from the open web UI Docker Compose process. Okay, so it's creating various containers, which as I mentioned, uh, and then it's starting them up. Um, as I mentioned, you can also say exit out supervisor D and say Docker PS dash A. And you can see these. I haven't done anything to start anything running in the terminal. I'm just poking around at the terminal because I like watching log files. None of that's necessary. Um, we can go back to servers and we see that everything's up and running uh, and a minute or so has passed. So this URL should now work and give us open web UI. Let's try it out. Notice it's the URL and then there was a little auth token afterwards and it went away pretty quickly, but if you copy and paste this copy link address and look at it, you can see that there's a little query parameter that authenticates you. You can share this link with somebody else and they'll be able to use the open web UI server. However, um, if somebody tries to connect to this server that doesn't know the authentication token, they'll just see this authentication required screen. Okay, so now that we've started up open web UI and connected to it, we do need to create an account the first time. And so I'll do sign up. The first user to create an account, which is you, becomes an admin. Okay, so I make the account, um, save my password, and it tells me all the cool stuff that's in the latest version. And now to actually use Open Web UI to accomplish something, we need to download a model. So to do that, click on settings, and then where it says um, models, we have to type the name of a model and download it. And if you say click here in light gray, that will show you the catalog of all of the models that are available. And of course, the most exciting model today is Llama 3. So that's the one we're going to download. So I type Llama 3 here, and then click the download button. And now downloading proceeds. And you can see there's a nice slider, it's downloading, then it will extract it, and then it will finally make it available so you can use it. Um, regarding Olama, there are, or rather Llama 3, this new model from Meta, there are, if you look at tags, you can see the options. This default one is eight um, billion parameter model, it's 4.7 gigabytes. That will easily fit in the space of our 24 gigabyte GPU. Uh, if we wanted to use the 70B model, we would need a more powerful GPU, or we could use several GPUs, which CoCalc fully supports. Okay, so it looks like the model is there, 
and hopefully it's available. Yep, it's successfully downloaded. Um, it's doing a little bit of extra work to make it available. So it may or may not be available yet. Oh, there it is. So we click to select it and then we can say, hello, Llama3, um, do you know what CoCalc is? So we ask it a little question. And the very first time, it takes a little while because it has to load the model into memory and start doing inference. By the way, switching to the terminal, which I was showing you earlier, you can kind of poke around and see quite a bit more at this point. So um, notice that there are these two Olama related Im uh, Docker images that are running. There's one that's called Olama and one that's called Open Web UI. If I make this smaller, that's a little easier to see. So the Olama container, uh, you can say things like Docker logs Olama, and all this stuff that was logged by the Olama container will fly by. Um, and then similarly, docker ps-a, do docker logs open web UI. You can see all the logs that are output by open web UI. And the Olama container logs, you can say docker logs-f, and then it will show you the logs. And that's kind of nice if you download another model, for example, then you'll see as it's downloading the log directly from Olama. That can be especially useful if you're downloading a large model. Um, so let's, well, you can do that at the same time. You can do settings and then models, and then let's choose another model just so we can see it in the logs. So let's see, what about this wizard LM2? This sounds exciting. Uh, it's another 7B model. So let's also download wizard LM2. Okay, so we just started it downloading. If we go back to the terminal, you should see a little activity. I'll just click hit this a few times. We'll come back and check in a minute and we should see that it'll it'll show some information about downloading and extracting and and so on. In the meantime, let's see what it's what it happened here. So Llama 3, um, it told us about CoCalc, it says it has Jupyter Notebooks, cloud-based computing, collaboration tools, and various other things. Um, by the way, if you want to try out uh, retrieval augmented generation. You can click on documents and upload them. Um, there's lots of different chats. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, so let's make another chat and let's select, oh, it still isn't quite there yet. Let's see what the status is. Ah, notice you're getting a little information about downloading of this model. It's not quite there, but once it gets downloaded, it'll eventually show up here and extracted and oh, see it's been downloaded and something else is happening. So let's see, make our new chat, select the model and we'll do wizard LM2, which uh, is from Microsoft and it's good at all kinds of things, multilingual reasoning. I don't know, let's see. Um, how do you say truck in Navajo? I guess that's multilingual. I don't know if it knows anything about the Navajo language, but we'll see. Okay, so again, it's firing up the word. Um, and it says uh, that. I will not try to, to uh, pronounce that. Uh, how do you say car in Navajo? Okay. My... Um, my aunt is Navajo, and she says that these LLMs are very bad at translating to Navajo. Uh, anyways, you can, you have multiple conversations, you can have multiple models at once. Uh, I mean, this o o Open Web UI is really a very very cool thing. So, I'll summarize the above in one sentence. You can also use Open uh, Web UI to write some code, and then you can copy and paste it into CoCalc, where you can actually run code. CoCalc's really, really good at running all kinds of code. So let me show you that really quickly. Um, how about, let's see, let's use Llama 3. So the new chat, uh, we have to choose a model. Let's do Llama 3. Uh, write a Python program to draw a beautiful and colorful uh, spiral using matplotlib. 
Let's see what it does. It's definitely writing a bunch of code. No idea if this is going to work, but it's enthusiastically writing the code. So let's copy the code. Now go over to CoCalc, which is great for running code. Make a Jupyter notebook, uh, select the Python kernel, and then let's run the code and see what happens. So it's now firing up the Python kernel, running the code, and wow, that is in fact a very beautiful colored spiral. And then some other blank box for no apparent reason. Um, so there you are. Okay, so that's how to use Open Web UI. It's uh, we have our own, basically in one creation of a compute server, we have a GPU backed cloud-based version of Open Web UI with a domain name, HTTP certificate, uh, SSL certificate. Um, you can create accounts on it, share this link with other people that you trust. And um, when you're done, you can turn it off by clicking stop. And then the price will go, let's see, from 94 cents an hour down to one cent per hour because you're just storing the data of your conversations and the models that you've downloaded. So I'm now going to stop this. Uh, thanks a lot for watching how to use OpenWebUI in CoCalc these days. Thanks.